Every year, new car models offer better technology and features. In fact, car makers have progressively improved cars much faster than airlines have improved in the past hundred some years. But here's the irony. Despite progressive innovations in the car industry, car reliability has gone down over the years, whereas airlines have innovated slower but have stayed safer. In fact, they say you have a higher chance of getting in a car crash than being in a plane crash. Today, I'm talking about this conundrum. Are we moving in the right direction? I'll also talk about the pressure car makers are facing today, what they're doing to cut manufacturing costs, and how this can prove deadly. We'll also see how suddenly Boeing tried to follow the car industry's pace of innovation, but how that led to the tragedy of the recent Boeing 737 MAX crashes, and how they're still trying to clean up the mess. The history of cars has been incredibly progressive, and we're already on the way to electrification. This year, 2022, is another year of car innovations with in-car wireless smartphone charging pads, 360-degree cameras, and video rearview mirrors. And that's only scratching the surface. Despite these innovations, believe it or not, car reliability is on the decline. Just look at Honda, for example. For years, they've been known for their top-tier reliable vehicles. But a couple of years ago, Honda was ranked in the middle of the pack in 19th place. Yet, only one year later, Later, their dependability ranking dropped to 28th place. That's a long way to fall for any automaker, especially in such a short period of time. The reason? Honda was facing some major issues, like a massive 1.79 million vehicle recall. This was due to software issues, braking drive shafts, and overheating window switches. And added on to all of that were some dangerous safety issues, like how their system's automatic emergency braking would engage without warning, even when there was nothing in front of the vehicle. But Honda isn't the only automaker to drop in dependability. From 20 to 21, in that same study, Genesis dropped from first place to eighth. And at the bottom of the list were other well-known automakers like GMC, Infiniti, Jeep, Volvo, Chrysler, Honda, Volkswagen, Jaguar, Alfa Romeo, and Land Rover. Now compare that with airline innovation. In a roughly 35-year period ending in 1980, a lot of great airplanes were produced. Yet in the years following up until today, airplane innovation has slowed down. Yes, it's been steady, but not leaps and bounds like the car industry. Airline innovation is nowhere near the speed of car innovation, and the big question is why? Let's rewind a bit. Many airplane innovations came during and after World War II, like improvements in long-range bombers, experimentation with jet-powered aircraft, and the use of radar to find enemy targets and detect enemy planes. Planes became faster, and fuel consumption also improved. In the 40s and 50s, new planes were being pumped out faster than you could say fly. In fact, commercial air travel boomed throughout the 1950s. That was a decade where more Americans flew rather than traveling by train. This ushered in the jet age. Today, it's a different story. Flying is nothing novel, and the general flight experience hasn't changed all that much for most passengers in decades. Part of the reason is because the stakes are much higher. If something new gets added too quickly to a plane and something goes wrong during an actual flight, it wouldn't just kill a driver and three or seven passengers. It can literally kill hundreds in one trip. Now, I'm sure you, like most most people have heard that most people die every year in car crashes than airplane crashes. But is it really true? Are airplanes really safer than cars? Well, just look at the stats. The International Air Transport Association reported that last year there were only one major aviation crash for every 7.7 .7 million flights. The overall fatality risk was 0.23. To get that in perspective, that means you would need to take a flight every day for 10,078 years to statistically be involved in a plane accident with at least one fatality. Yet in 2019, the odds of dying in a car crash were approximately one out of every 107. In that sense, you could say it's true. But remember, calculating risk per year can be misleading. One really bad year can produce some frightening numbers, while a year with no crashes can look like there's a 0% chance of ever getting in a plane crash. Yet, if we take this into account, one thing remains unchanged. Some of the biggest tragedies that have marked the 21st century have been plane crashes. If you haven't heard of the Boeing 737 MAX tragedy, well, well, Boeing had a stellar reputation as a premier airline manufacturer here in the U.S. known for top-tier safety records. All that started to change in 2018. That's when Lion Air Flight 619, which was flying a Boeing 737 MAX, crashed in October 2018. Just five months later, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302, also flying a Boeing 737, crashed. Tragically, 346 people died in these two crashes. Initially, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, resisted grounding the aircraft until they received evidence. But after the second crash, the FAA officially grounded them. But by then, 51 foreign regulators had a 
already earlier grounded the plane. Worldwide, Boeing 737 MAX passenger airline was grounded for more than one and a half years between March 2019 and December 2020, and even longer in other jurisdictions. These crashes brought an end to the safest period for commercial flying in the history of aviation, and they cast a doubt on Boeing's reputation. Later, the Justice Department reached a deferred prosecution agreement with Boeing, yet the agreement only protected the company from further prosecution. It does not protect any employees who may engage in misconduct. What misconduct are we talking about here? Well, Boeing had originally been charged on criminal conspiracy to defraud the FAA. Basically, the 737 MAX came with a new flight control and safety system called Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, or MCAS, pronounced MCAS for short. Unfortunately, MCAS forced planes into nosedives that the pilots could not pull the aircrafts out of. The Federal Administration found that Boeing employees misled the FAA about the significance of the MCAS system. The investigation went to find that Boeing didn't even tell pilots of the new MCAS, and MCAS wasn't mentioned in pilot training and flight deck manuals. In other words, pilots didn't even know the system existed in the first place, let alone know how to operate or override it. Many pilots found that out only after the crashes. Later, Boeing admitted to criminal misconduct for misleading regulators about the safety of the MCAS system, but they did not plead guilty to the charge. If they did, a criminal conviction would make it impossible for them to get any future government contracts. And so, as long as they comply with the terms of the settlement, the government could drop the criminal charge after three years. So how much was Boeing required to pay? $2.5 billion. That includes a criminal penalty of almost $244 million. Then there's $1.7 billion to compensate the airlines that purchased 737 MAX planes but lost the revenue when the planes were grounded. And then there's $500 million to help the families of those who were killed in the two crashes. If you're wondering how something like this can even happen, well, here's the thing. Boeing's new MCAS system was installed into the plane, but Boeing didn't require pilots to be trained on the new system. The reason why is because they needed to make the plane marketable. In other words, they wanted to rush and sell the planes as fast as possible, so stock prices would go up and shareholder value would increase. Evidence shows that Boeing pushed for cost reductions in testing the system, and they ignored engineers who asked for more sophisticated flight controls. Boeing even turned on a request from Lion Air themselves for additional training. All this to say, it's the classic case of what happens when corporations start focusing on money or shareholder values rather than on human lives. Greed leads companies to compromise on safety. If you think the story is already bad, well, it only gets worse. When a plane's crash happened, Boeing didn't step up to take responsibility for its own technology. Instead, they deflected the blame to the pilots. If you want the full story, I recommend the Netflix original documentary called Downfall, The Case Against Boeing. It follows the story and the investigation and explanation of how Boeing executives fully knew about the risks of MCAS. But the culture in Boeing had changed when the corporation was merged and restructured. The documentary takes a deep dive into the company as a whole, including interviews with former employees who elaborate on how the workplace environment changed to even toxic. If you get a chance to watch the documentary, it will like leave you feeling angry and appalled by corporate greed and deception. But look, Boeing isn't the only company under strain. Car companies today are under a whole bunch of pressure and strain. Just think of the past two years, which has seen some of the most destructive storms ever hit the car industry. In this short period of time, we've seen a shortage of semiconductor chips, a global pandemic disrupting supply chains, the rise of ecological concerns, and on top of all that, we now have major war impacting the supply and cost of raw material. Let's put this into perspective. Ever wonder how much it actually costs to make a car? The answer might surprise you. Of course, there are a variety of factors. There are fixed costs like maintaining the facility, finding suppliers, building and testing prototypes, retraining workers, and adding new tools and technology. These normally stay on the same, more or less, no matter the number of cars being manufactured. But then there are variable costs. A lot of that depends on the sheer volume of vehicles being produced. I'm talking about things like manufacturing, raw materials, labor, and distribution costs. At the end of the day, the gross profit margin for car manufacturers is usually somewhere between 13 to 21%. Luxury car brands usually enjoy profits closer to 21%. Well, a typical budget car brings in less. Just how much are we looking at here? Well, a 2020 Toyota Corolla hatchback model sells for 20 to 24,000 bucks. The profit margin is around 3,500. In total, manufacturing this vehicle would cost anywhere from 16,500 to 18,000 
$80,000. What about luxury car brand? Well, Ferrari's profit margin per car sold is a whopping $80,000. Your average Ferrari costs over two hundred dollars and sometimes the price tank can soar as high as $350,000 for classic models. That means, in a total, manufacturing a Ferrari can be as high as one hundred and twenty dollars to even $150,000 to build. Obviously, most companies don't have $150,000 manufacturing bill per car. Nevertheless, costs have been rising, and that's why car companies are seriously reevaluating cost cutting strategies. Take Toyota, for example. A couple of months ago, Toyota warned investors that unprecedented increases in materials and logistic costs could cut the company's full year profit by as much as 20%. They expect material costs to more than double. That would put material costs at a massive 1.45 trillion yen. A bit over 11 billion bucks. Toyota isn't alone. It's no surprise that many car companies are implementing cost cutting measures. Yet, if we've learned anything from Boeing, just remember that trimming off the safety fat can lead to dire consequences. But not all companies are cutting costs. Some are really investing in making stronger, safer cars. Guess what the safest car in the world currently is? Well, I'll tell you. Among this year's list is the 2022 Honda Civic. Right now, it's rated as one of the safest cars in the world. Some of its safety features include things like adaptive cruise control, traffic sign recognition, recognition, automatic high beam headlights and rear seat reminders, blind spot monitoring, front and rear parking sensors, and even rain sensing windshield wipers. Despite these technological features, the price remains affordable with the starting price around $22,000. But if you're not a Honda Civic kind of person, there's the 2022 Genesis G90. Some of its safety features include things like forward collision warning, automatic high beam headlights, and driver attention monitoring, pedestrian and cyclist detection, surround view parking camera systems, and an electric Electronic parking brake. But now here's the thing. Car isn't cheap. You'd have to shell it at least 75 grand and up. But now you tell me, do you feel safer in a car or in a plane? Do you agree that car reliability is going down? Please share your opinion by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.